This video is on plant hormones or plant growth regulators. I will also cover auxins and cytokinins in more detail because that's what is included in the study guide. Plants use internal chemical signals to control growth. The word hormone is based on the Greek word for stimulate, which is what it does in mammals. In plants, the chemicals not only stimulate, but they also inhibit growth. So it's more accurate to use the term plant growth regulator. And the plant growth regulators are tricky in that they'll have different effects depending on how sensitive that plant part is, what age it is, what part it is, and sometimes the same regulator can have opposing effects depending on the concentration and other factors. Traditionally, there's five classes of plant growth regulators, but there have been a lot more groups that have been identified that aren't going to be covered. In this video, I'm only covering the two classes that the Arborist Study Guide actually includes as key terms, and these are auxins and cytokinins. The other three traditional classes will be covered in a separate bonus video. The first regulator class is auxin, and it's crucial for plant growth. Auxin is mainly produced by the shoot apical meristem, so at the very tip of a shoot as well as in developing fruits and leaves. It always moves from the tip towards the base of whichever plant part you're talking about, whether that's a leaf, a stem, or a root. It cannot go in the reverse direction. So what does it do? Auxin affects a lot of things. It triggers flower and leaf formation, and it causes both the primary and secondary vascular tissues to start differentiating. It can also trigger roots to form. So here's a practical application. Let's say you have a cutting that you want to propagate. You can buy rooting hormone, which is a synthetic auxin, and dip the bottom of the cutting into it before you put it in your medium. The chances of you getting roots off of this cutting is way higher than if you just put it in there without the rooting hormone because auxin triggers root primordia. This next one also has a lot of practical application and specifically for tree care. So auxin also inhibits the growth of the lateral buds. I just mentioned that auxin goes from the tip to the base of whatever plant part you're talking about, right? So at the top of the tree, you have the uppermost apical bud. It's producing auxin, which moves down the stem. You'll always have more auxin at the top because that's where the source is. As the auxin keeps moving down, you have a gradient of highest amounts of auxin to lowest. At some point, you're going to be far enough from that apical bud that the auxin doesn't inhibit the lateral buds anymore, and they can start growing. This is the basis of the gardener recommendation to pinch off the top of a tomato plant if you want it to become bushier. When you do that, you take the apical meristem off, so you get rid of the auxin, and all of those lateral buds can now grow instead of just having a single leader. With trees, heading cuts and topping trees have the same impact because of auxin. When you take the top off, whether that's the top of a branch or the top of a tree, the auxin's gone. So the lateral buds are just going to shoot out uncontrolled. You'll end up with a whole bunch of epicormic sprouts at the cut surface and below it. There are a couple of commercial uses for auxin. One is the one that I had just mentioned, where you can purchase synthetic auxin as rooting hormone. It can also be used as an herbicide. And a well-known form of this is 2,4-D. It's not 100% clear how it works or why it affects certain plants more, but it seems to affect broadleaf weeds more than grasses because the broad leaves will absorb more chemical and move the chemical around more, whereas grasses can inactivate them. The second class of plant growth regulators are the cytokinins. They are very important in cell division, which is also called cytokinesis. It's generally accepted that cytokinins are manufactured in the roots and transported upwards in the xylem. It's the ratio 
of auxin and cytokinin that dictates what happens to undifferentiated cells. Let's say you have callous tissue, which is a mass of undifferentiated cells. They don't have a role yet. If you apply more auxin to them, you'll get roots. If you apply more cytokinins to them, you'll get bud formation. But if you have about equal proportion of auxin to cytokinin, they will not differentiate and they will stay meristematic. Economically, it's really important for tissue culture and research and biotechnology, but I don't know of applications outside of that.